thank you all for being here for this uh, another session of the seminar. And uh, on behalf of myself, uh, Caterina and Gonzalo, welcome. Today we have a very interesting and out of the box presentation for Portuguese medieval standards. Since it's not very, you're not very used to, to hear someone talk about this geography and this chronology. So for us, it's a, a double pleasure to have you with us, Ori Vestaisen that will talk to us about train, uh, trade in the three capitalistic North Atlantic. So, as the title says, uh, is a specialist on the North Atlantic, both from the medieval history standpoint and uh, from the archaeologist, uh, archaeology standpoint. He's currently a professor of archaeology at the University of Iceland, but he trained mostly in England. Firstly, in the, at the Institute of Archaeology of London and at the University College of London where he obtained his PhD in the uh, long, last, very long year, 1996. Ori is a proficuous author. <laughs> very, very <generous. laughs> uh, As I said, it's especially interesting to be able to combine these two these two, uh, these two disciplines, from one from history and archaeology, it's, it's always interesting to, to hear an archaeologist that is fluent and can deal uh, proficuously with history. It's not, it's not ever the case. <laughs> and uh, and to not to well, not, not uh, to elongate myself, I just want to say that he published a very important book called The Christianization of Iceland, Priests power and social change uh, at the Oxford University Press. So we are very eager to, to hear you again on the train, the trains in the pre-capitalistic North Atlantic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. And uh, first of all, I'd uh, like to uh, thank the Institute of uh, Medieval Studies for uh, uh, hosting me here, allowing me to talk about uh, the things I do. and. Uh, 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 giving me the opportunity to, to work hard in my, during my sabbatical and uh, making sure that I get plenty of eat to eat every day. Uh, uh, what I want to do here today is uh, to talk a little bit around a, a project I've been running for a long time, uh, as, as archaeological projects tend to, tend to run. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the excavation of a, a trading site uh, so-called uh, in the north of Iceland where the, the red dot is, the name of the, the site is uh, Gausir and uh, uh, the, the map there uh, is uh, intended to, to give you a, a sense of, of where we are in the world and, and what kind of distances uh, uh, we are dealing with. The, the 1500 kilometer uh, radius uh, gives you a sense of the, the distances involved in, in just getting from mainland uh, Europe or Britain to, to Iceland, but also uh, uh, it just skirts the, the, the southern tip of, of Greenland, uh, where there were also Norse settlements uh, in, this, in this period. And, uh, and you can see that even, even if it's a relatively short distance from the northwest of Iceland to, to the nearest coast of Greenland, it is in fact almost the same distance uh, as from Norway to Iceland, from Iceland to the, the Norse settlements in, in, in Greenland. So uh, uh, these people already in the 10th century were, were traveling very widely in the, in the North Atlantic. And uh, 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 there has long, of course, been uh, fascination uh, about this, and people have had uh, all sorts of ideas about uh, why uh, people uh, went to all this trouble in the beginning and, and how these, these uh, communities and societies were, were sustained. And, and trade, of course, uh, uh, has always been suspected to be an important part of this, this picture. And uh, so what I want to do here today is, is to just sketch briefly the, the, the main uh, I, I, I'm going to give you a sort of caricatures of, of the main ideas uh, people have been entertaining uh, in this field and then try to put our archaeological results uh, from Gausser uh, in, in that uh, context. 
So, uh, 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 this, of course, I, I, I need to warn you, is, is a caricature and, a, and, a, and an oversimplification, what I'm, 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 I'm going to say now. But uh, I think it gives, gives a, a, a more or less uh, uh, accurate idea of, of the, 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 the main currents of thought uh, in, this, in this line of business. Uh, the traditional way of, of thinking about this is, uh, goes back to the 18th, 19th century historiography, and, uh, and it is very much time in with uh, romantic and nationalistic uh, ideas about, uh, about the past. And uh, uh, an important tenant, uh, tenant in this uh, uh, line of thought is, is the, uh, uh, what we read in, in the sagas of Icelanders, the, the, the 13th, 14th century uh, descriptions of what hap happened in the, in, during the Viking Age of, of, the, of the colonists coming usually on their own, with their own ships. And uh, uh, so, so that's clearly what uh, the, the authors of these sagas in the 13th and 14th centuries thought uh, was happening back in the late 9th century when the settlement, uh, the colonization of Iceland uh, took place. And, uh, and, and from this supposed fact, uh, uh, scholars have, have postulated that uh, uh, the, the Icelanders and later on the Greenlanders would have had uh, their own fleets to begin with. Uh, but they also recognized that uh, uh, the, 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 the colonies would have had trouble in uh, uh, maintaining these fleets because there's no lumber, there's no uh, timber in these islands which, which would allow them to build ocean-going ships. Uh, so they'd need to uh, uh, go to Norway or, 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 or even uh, further west to, to America to, to uh, obtain the, the, the material to build new ships, to renew their, their fleet. So the, uh, uh, already by the sort of middle of the 19th century, there was a, a sort of fairly well formulated idea that the, the, the fleet, uh, uh, the original fleets of the, of the colonists had uh, uh, become uh, 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 obsolete and, and uh, they'd, they'd lost their ships uh, uh, already by the 11th or, or 12th centuries, that they were still, uh, the, these, these colonies were still economically vibrant, that they were able to replace these ships by buying them or, or obtaining, obtaining the necessary building material uh, elsewhere, but by 1200 uh, they had lost out. Uh, to to uh, the, the the mainland competition, Norwegian merchants, and, uh, and this, of course, is simply uh, because of the fact that by 1200 we have uh, contemporary sources that uh, describe these sort of things, and then Norwegian merchants are are quite quite common in in Iceland, and in fact in Greenland as well. We have descriptions of of, of that too. Uh, so so it is really just the the fact that we begin to have those kinds of sources that uh, uh, tell us this, but uh, uh, this was given a, a meaning, a chronological meaning uh, uh, by these, the, 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 these, these scholars. So they imagined, and, and this is the romantic and nationalistic part, that uh, uh, during the 10th and 11th and 12th centuries, uh, the Icelanders and the Greenlanders were uh, actively participating in international trade, that they were producing uh, all sorts of, of uh, uh, valuable goods, both uh, exotics, uh, uh, like uh, walrus ivory, which I will talk more about, uh, but also bulk goods like, like woolens and, and fish and uh, butter and hides and, and things like that. And, and so they imagined that uh, uh, there would have been a, a vibrant market for these kinds of things, and the Greenlanders and Icelanders were regularly sailing uh, back to Europe to, to trade their products and, and bring back home all kinds of goodies. Uh, uh, and, and this, uh, uh, in, in the 19th and for much of the 20th century, was probably mainly just thought to be common sense, that uh, it must have worked like, like this. Uh, uh, but the, 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 it was clear in the sources by the, by the 13th century that the trade was not in the hands of the locals anymore. Uh, uh, it, was, it was Norwegian merchants who were, who were running the, the ships between, between uh, Norway on the one hand and Iceland and Greenland on the, on the, on the other. So the, the implication was then of course that the, 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 the profits uh, from the trade were, were no longer being enjoyed uh, in, in the North Atlantic colonies. They were, they were uh, staying back in, in, in Norway or in the European uh, system. And, and, and many of these scholars, they, they felt that uh, this must have contributed to the, to the loss of independence 
uh, of, of these, these colonies in the late 13th century. So in the 1260s, both the Icelanders and the Greenlanders uh, 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 formally declared uh, uh, that they, they, they were parts of the uh, Norwegian kingdom. So they became Norwegian subjects. And uh, in, in the nationalistic reading of all these things, this was a, a, a major setback uh, so, so they imagined that the, these colonies had been, had been politically independent and, uh, and that this independence was lost in, in, the, in the 13th century. Uh, and a lot of the historiography of the 19th and 20th centuries in, in Iceland is about sort of figuring out who was to blame for this uh, horrible development. And, uh, uh, and, and a number of uh, uh, Factors were identified, and, and one of them was this: that the 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 the, the, the local communities had, had lost their their uh, 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 were, were no longer in control of the of the external trade, and uh, and this of course made good sense in the 19th century when Icelandic capitalists were uh, doing uh, doing the, the same thing they were trying to get back the control over the external trade which had been uh, in, in the hands of main, uh, by then Danish uh, uh, merchants mainly. Uh, so this was all of course music to those ears as you can imagine. Uh, <laughs> so the, so the, the idea was this, that you had this uh, vibrant uh, trade and market participation in the, in the high middle ages, late, late Viking age and high middle ages and, uh, and once uh, 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 the, the colonies uh, lost control of this trade. It, it led to uh, 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 both economic and cultural stagnation and political subjugation. Uh, so this, uh, there are very obvious uh, uh, rhetorical problems with, with, uh, with this, let alone the, the factual ones. Uh, and, and for a long time, uh, various scholars have, have uh, 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 seen the problems and, and tried out sort of different avenues of, of uh, 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 explanation. And uh, uh, th this is not a, as a coherent school of thought as, as the, the, the earlier one. Uh, but already by the 1920s and 30s, uh, 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 people were, were thinking uh, particularly uh, for Greenland. Uh, which is, a, 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 in some ways, quite a different case from, from, from Iceland. The, the, uh, uh, it was just much more remote, it was much more difficult to get there. Uh, the, the colony was much smaller, so why, while there were maybe 50 or 60,000 people living in, in Iceland in the Middle Ages, there were maybe two or 3,000 living in, in Greenland. So it's in a much, much smaller uh, uh, unit. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and their economy clearly was uh, uh, different in, in, in that it was uh, obviously uh, much more tied into the, the trade in walrus ivory. Uh, and, and there are very good grounds to uh, uh, sort of believe that. Uh, so, so one idea which is, which is actually rather recent, uh, but uh, is, is uh, 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 quite commonly ac accepted, is that the initial uh, uh, exploration of, of the North Atlantic back in the 9th century was probably carried out by walrus hunters. And, uh, and this makes good sense. It, it makes good sense that the people who are after sort of quick profits are, are, are exactly the kinds of characters who, were, who would be uh, willing to take these kinds of risks. Uh, the, the risk of, of sailing over open sea uh, for many, many days be, before, before you, you have land sight. And, and, and these uh, 9th century Norse voyagers were the first Europeans to do this in, in the North Atlantic, uh, to, to uh, uh, sail over, over the, the open, open sea. And uh, you need uh, uh, good confidence and, and, uh, and uh, some basic equipment, at least, to be, to be able to do it. And it's unlikely that you'd, you'd start off you know, with your grandmother and children in, on an expedition like, like that. It's, it's, uh, uh, to begin with, at least, it's, it's a risky, risky business. And, uh, and we know that the, the, there, were, there were small walrus colonies in Iceland, and they became extinct very soon. And, uh, and, and, and that was likely why they went on to, to Greenland, where there were much, much larger walrus colonies. And, and uh, however many they killed, they were not able to uh, uh, put a, a sl slightest dent in, 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 in that. So, so uh, uh, it makes good sense that the, the original impetus for 
for uh, exploring these lands and uh, uh, finding out how you could get there on, on a regular basis was, was uh, tied in with uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, exploitation of a, a, a highly valuable uh, product. Uh, <laughs> and then people have have uh, suggested that possibly uh, the farming settlements, when they begin, they were uh, originally thought uh, so that were, were simply as a way to support the hunting operations. Uh, and uh, an important issue in this is just the, t the length of time needed to, to get to these places. So uh, even in the 14th century, uh, uh, people, uh, sort of mariners, normally did not sail uh, to Iceland and back again in the same year. So they would, they would overwinter. They would stay through the winter uh, in, in Iceland and sail back the following year. Uh, uh, on the Greenland expeditions, they usually took at least two years and often three to five years. Uh, so, so just getting to Greenland and back again would, would mean that you'd need to you stay through the winter. And, and if you're going to stay through the winter, you, you, would, you, would, you would rather like to have something else to eat than walrus meat which I can tell you is not very interesting. And uh, uh, so, uh, so that's a, it, it makes sense to, the, to a degree that uh, uh, these, these uh, settlements uh, possibly originally were, that was the, the idea. Uh, <laughs> but that of course depends on our assessment of, for instance, you know, how much money they were making out of these, these, these Waller's ivory, and we really have very, very uh, uh, little to go on uh, there. We know that it was ridiculously expensive, uh, but you know, how, how much the hunters were getting out of it is, is difficult, difficult to know. So uh, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll leave this, this possibility. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, there are, there, there's a recent study just out this, this year uh, where a, a number of uh, walrus ivory artifacts around Europe have been uh, 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 analyzed for their, their DNA and it, and it seems that the majority of, of these pieces do in fact come from Greenland rather than the, the White Sea which is the, in sort of Russia where, which would be the other, other main source of, of walrus in, 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 in Europe. Uh, so it su so that suggests and supports the idea that uh, uh, Greenland was uh, uh, more active, had, had sort of cornered the market in this, this product uh, probably already in the, in the 10th century and, 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 and kept, uh, uh, kept this until the 14th uh, when uh, the price of walrus ivory starts to, to drip and, and this product sort of just uh, 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 isn't as sought after uh, as it used to be. And there are, there's, a, there's a lot of debate about why this, that was, and uh, elephant ivory comes into, into that uh, issue. But the 14th century is clearly the time of decline in, 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 uh, in, in this product. Uh, but there are, uh, uh, and, and th there, there are good indications, particularly from the 13th and early 14th century, that uh, uh, they, were, they were producing a lot of this, but also that it was getting uh, a very high, high price, and I'll come, up, come back to that. Uh, but there were also other products, so walrus ivory is, is, is the, sort of the, the, the main thing that most sources talk about, and we have most archaeological evidence uh, for, both in the, the actual uh, uh, pieces of art that were, that were produced, but also in the, in the, in the, the chip. Uh, we find at practically every archaeological site in Greenland. So uh, the, 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 the tusk goes a, a long way into the skull of these, these animals and, the, and the, the best part really is, is the, the bit of the tusk that is inside the, the skull. And, uh, uh, and it is, it is uh, uh, you, you, it, it's difficult work and, and uh, uh, you need to know what you're doing to extract the tusk from the from the, the skull. So the hunters usually they go and kill these animals and they bring the whole skull with them. Uh, and in Greenland we are talking thousands of kilometers to, to just from the hunting grounds to the places where they live. And then they sit through the winter and they chip away at these these uh, uh, the, at these skulls and these these chips we find in the in the middens of these these uh, uh, sites everywhere. In every single site in, in, in Greenland which has been excavated has, has these chips, and, uh, uh, which tells us that this is a sort of everyone in this, this small community is, is involved in, in, in the, this business uh, somehow, uh, whether they are uh, uh, active participants and, and uh, are, are getting some of the profits or whether they are just you know, almost like slaves uh, working on this, we, we don't know. Uh, but that's the, that's the Waller's Ivory. 
Uh, walrus hides uh, are in fact uh, also uh, quite important in this. They are uh, the, the, the hide of the walrus is extremely tough, and uh, and it was used to make rigging, and and for for, for ships and and uh, uh, sort of for, for ropes, and and uh, uh, was was very sought after uh, for, for 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 that purpose. And then there are other uh, product narwhal tusks. Uh, the, the narwhal is a, is a whale and it has a long tusk and it, this was marketed as a, as a unicorn uh, horns. And, uh, uh, but they are, they are quite rare and, uh, 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 and, and you cannot hunt the narwhal in, 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 in the same quantity as you can the, the, the walrus. Uh, you have uh, uh, falcons and, and sulfur, at least from the late 13th uh, century, uh, which, which can be grouped as, as sort of exotic uh, uh, products. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to those. So these are the sort of the, the, the main products you, you, you hear about. There are there are others, uh, 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 and and the the uh, uh, proponents of, of this school of thought they, they tend to to see this all as a as a sort of resource periphery where uh, uh, people are busy. Uh, 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 obtaining the, these goods and getting them to markets, but they're not necessarily reaping any of the benefits. Uh, so they're not in control of, of the, of the uh, production or, or marketing of, 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 of uh, the, these specialist products. And uh, there, is, uh, there are good reasons, good grounds to, to think in, in that uh, uh, way. Uh, uh, there are also ideas that there, there was sort of profit-driven uh, production of particularly woolen cloth. And, uh, uh, and this is based mainly on saga references uh, to, to just that. Um, and I'll also uh, mention that just in a, just in a while. Uh, and, and then uh, there, there are a number of studies which, which uh, begin with the observation that Greenland, of course, failed. And, and the, the colonies there uh, were abandoned or they became extinct. Uh, and uh, in the in the 15th century, while Iceland uh, uh, really did become a, a resource uh, periphery, uh, primarily a, a producer of, of fish and, and, and woolens uh, from the 14th, 15th centuries uh, onwards, and, uh, and and by the sort of 17th, 18th centuries, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a fair description to say that Iceland was a was an economic colony of of, of Denmark, and uh, uh, so so. Uh, 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 the, you, you, you get these narratives where, where uh, uh, Greenland uh, failed, and, and of course climate change and all kinds of other things uh, are often mentioned in this in this uh, uh, context. Whereas Iceland sort of hung on to by the fingertips, and uh, uh, and there's a general sense in Icelandic historiography that the, the first centuries were were a happy time and and a time of prosperity. Whereas by the late Middle Ages things were were uh, going badly, and then the 17th and 18th centuries are the sort of nadir where where uh, uh, everything is just misery, and uh, 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 and the sort of both economic and political fortunes were at a, a very low ebb. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, and 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 certainly during that time, you could you could say that uh, Iceland was a resource uh, periphery. Greenland, of course, was was no longer, uh, at least, not settled by Europeans. Uh, so these are the and, and and you can you can you can you can sense that the the, the second. Uh, uh, narrative isn't really a coherent narrative. It's more like a more like a, a, a collection of, of ideas. But they are the most current ones, and uh, uh, there's nobody who has to try to synthesize this into a into a into a single whole. Uh, I think so. The, both these narratives are are, are wrong, uh, and I've already given you some reasons, particularly for the for the first one. Uh, there is really no evidence for any sort of market-driven. Uh, production in these 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 colonies, uh, uh, and and of course I just just explained that this about the the, the chippings of the of the walrus tusks, uh, uh, which you could say uh, are, are a good argument for they, they are clearly uh, uh, preparing a product for uh, foreign foreign markets, uh, but the when when we, we we have descriptions in in the sagas and there are two types of sagas there, there's the sagas of Icelanders which are sort of like historical novels written in the 13th and 14th centuries but take place in the, during the Viking Age, and then the so-called contemporary sagas, which are more like chronicles of events in the 12th and 13th centuries, which are usually considered to be more, more reliable historical sources. And in those sagas, uh, we, we have plenty of references to uh, 
chieftains and, and uh, magnates who uh, uh, need to go to Norway and, and then uh, they, they say, well, I need to go to Norway and I'm going to go maybe in two years' time. And uh, so I'm going to send out a message to my, all my clients and, and, and ask them to uh, you know, uh, start up the, the, the weaving and, and, uh, and because I will need uh, 50 bales of, of uh, cloth. Uh, to, to pay my way when I, when I go to the, to the, to the court. So, so there is uh, possibly industrial scale production, but it is, it's ad hoc. Uh, they are they're only producing when they have reason to go. And, and uh, uh, so it's not, a, uh, it's not a production system where you're just producing because you know you can take your product to a market and you will be able to sell it. There is no market. Uh, uh, you, have to, you have to do it uh, this way. And, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, the, 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 the same seems to be the case with, with the, the walrus ivory. So we have descriptions from the 12th century of Norwegian merchants coming to Greenland and they say, well, we are actually mainly interested in your ivory. And uh, uh, the, the, there, are, there are sources saying that the Greenlanders were trying to export other things, hides and, 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 and butter even. And, and, uh, uh, and then the, the locals would say, okay, well, we'll then mount an expedition to, to, the, to the, 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 uh, the northern hunting grounds, thousand kilometers away. And, uh, and, and, and so, so the following summer they would go there and, uh, and, and they would uh, kill lots of walrus, come back, uh, uh, and the, the second winter, they will they will be the chipping away uh, business, and then sort of uh, uh, the third summer after, they can they can possibly sail away with the with the walrus. If the, the next Norwegian merchant doesn't come uh, in ten years, which did happen, uh, they will not be bothering to 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 go to the. There's no reason for them to to. Uh, 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 go to these grounds because the, the uh, and, and the, that's all, that's that's in, in fact a, uh, uh, the, the, there are good market uh, reasons for that because you, you you don't want to flood the market completely with, with, with this product which is what probably what what happened in the end uh, so so uh, uh, these are uh, these are certainly not. Uh, 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 economic or production systems that are governed by market forces. And, and uh, uh, another re good reason to think in, in, along these lines is that the, 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 the buyer of these products is really only one person, uh, or possibly two. It's the king and sometimes the archbishop. And it's they who, who, who get this stuff. And they don't buy it like just any customer. Uh, what you do is you, 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 uh, you know, if you, if you have a, a, a handful of, of, uh, of walrus ivory, you, 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 know, you make a, a big splash when you, when you come to, to Nidaros, the, 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 the capital of, of, of Norway, and you, you wait until a good opportunity, Christmas or something, and, and then you, you, sort of, you seek an audience with the king and you, you present your, your ivory to him. And we have lots of stories of, of precisely this kind of behavior. It's not necessarily always walrus ivory. People are bringing polar bears uh, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to the king and they give, give the bears to, to the king as a, as a present and you can just imagine you know, what, you know, what, what you do if you, you're given a polar bear. Uh, but the, the, uh, 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 the, 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 the whole system really re revolves around the, the uh, 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 this this kind of exchange that you, you, you the, there is there is a the, the market is is the king and, and to some degree the, the archbishop or, or even individual bishops in in, in Norway uh, there are stories of people going further further afield to the Danish king or 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 even all the way to Rome uh, to to uh, but they are they are giving this stuff to to uh, you know, select few top-notch individuals, and and what they get instead is not just you know cash, uh, it's patronage and uh, it's uh, uh, and and status, and uh, and and these stories uh, uh, we we have of, of this behavior, they they are all about that. They are how people transform their their personal fortunes, their status, and and uh, uh, rather than their their bank account. It's it's uh, it's it's not about that at at, at all. Uh, uh, by the early 14th century, we do have evidence that uh, the Greenlanders, for instance, they are paying their taxes in walrus ivory, uh, and and you could say that this this 
acts almost like a discount. In, in some ways, it was not very difficult for them to, to uh, 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 produce huge amounts of money uh, or, or what amounted to uh, huge wealth uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a short uh, time. It, it, it was no extra burden on their economy, really. And, and uh, 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 so there is an argument there that uh, the, these these resource colonies, in, in some ways, had it had it easier than the than the, the ordinary subjects back in Norway who just had to you know produce cereals or or butter uh, uh, to pay their pay, pay their taxes. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, uh, it, it's very soon after we, we hear of, of these kinds of things that uh, we, we also see a slump in the in the value of these 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 products. So uh, uh, as soon as you begin to uh, uh, do this, then, then the, the, the value of the product slips and, and the whole system really starts to, to, to crumble. Uh, so it was not a good idea, uh, even if there was some kind of discount in, in, involved. Uh, also, by the late 13th century, we have royal monopolies on, on both the sulfur and, and the falcons. Uh, so, uh, so really, the, the first thing that the king does when, when he becomes the formal uh, um, uh, authority in, in Iceland is to, is to splash on this, this uh, 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 monopoly, uh, which, which at least the, as the way it's formulated in the, in the, in the law is, is simply that he, he only he has the right to buy the, these products in, in, in Iceland. So the Icelanders are not allowed to sell anyone else. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> and that sort of, take, sort of removes these products from, from the, the gift giving uh, 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 line of line of business, of course, and, and uh, 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 the, the, the the king there uh, says, "Well, I'm I'm your only customer," and I'm, and of course he then decides what he pays for for these these products. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 uh, uh, avenue of ex uh, explanation I'm exploring is. Uh, to what extent you could say that the exports of these colonies are primarily paying for the maintenance of the communications networks. That is, uh, it costs a lot of money to send ships over the North Atlantic uh, every year. Uh, uh, the, the Icelanders in 1262, when they, when they make their deal with, with the king, they say, well, we, we want a minimum of six ships every year. Thank you. And, and uh, so, so the, 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 the king is responsible for keeping up the communications and uh, presumably the Greenlanders had had a similar deal. We just don't know about it because we don't have any any uh, uh, sources from from written sources from that that country. Uh, and and it is the king who who has to invest in and run these these uh, these operations. The, the, he, he, uh, either he owned the ships or or parts of the ships, and usually uh, the, the the kings were one way or another behind the, the building and the running of, of uh, uh, ocean going ships in, in in Norway as practically everywhere uh, else. So uh, uh, if if you if you reckon the the costs of of uh, uh, maintaining this infrastructure. Uh, you, you, you can easily, or rather, it's then difficult to see uh, how, how the, the, what, what the king was get, getting sort of um, uh, financially out of this, this, this bargain. Uh, uh, it's, it's likely that it was more expensive uh, on, uh, to, to, uh, to, to build and, and, and run the, the, the ships. Uh, and there is something about how commerce is... is uh, 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 practiced in, in the North Atlantic in this period, that, which at least reminds me more of, of tourism rather than capitalism. Uh, uh, the, 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 the merchants we see are, are, are not, uh, what they're doing when we hear about them is, is usually has nothing so much to do with, with, with trade. And, and uh, uh, rather they, they are found in all kinds of other roles. They are political advisors, they are envoys of the king, they are, they are military specialists. Uh, for some reason, it's, it's in, in Iceland in the 13th century, we had lots of civil wars. Uh, it's only Norwegians who know how to operate a bow, and, 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 and they are always merchants. And, and uh, so they take part in, in uh, uh, political and military conflict. Uh, and, but clearly also, uh, there, there, is, there is an element of, of a lottery in this. So the people were, of course, also, they were not, uh, 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 they, they were interested in profits. 
uh, don't get me wrong. They, 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 and they were in it, sort of partly for it, but the, 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 the expectation of, of a profit was, was not the, uh, 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 was not a great one. Uh, uh, mostly it seems that uh, people were just lucky to get away with their lives and, and to get back. Uh, in, uh, once in a while they would, they would strike it lucky and, and uh, get, get very, very rich. Uh, from around 1200 we have a couple of price lists in Iceland uh, which give you, a, give you an idea and I'm not going to go through these. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you can read what it is they are putting prices on and these are very mundane things. Uh, there, there is no indication in, in the price lists or the legislation that uh, uh, the, the, there was any kind of uh, uh, free market exchange in, in uh, the, these luxury goods I've been mainly uh, talking about. And, uh, and if, in fact, if you look at the imports, you can see that it's mainly metals and cloth uh, and, and uh, things to do with the church, like wax, wax and, and incense. Uh, and, and there's only one foodstuff meal, uh, 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 ground grain. Uh, not even beer or wine are, are, are mentioned in, in this. We do know they, they had some, but, uh, or they, it was imported, but uh, the, uh, clearly not enough, enough vol volume to, to merit uh, inclusion in these, these uh, uh, lists. Uh, now, getting back to Gausser. Gausser uh, is uh, a well-known archaeological site and was origi uh, already um, uh, described in the 18th century and it was excavated in the beginning of the 20th century, a part of it. Uh, it's mentioned in historical sources between the middle of the 12th century and the end of the 14th. Uh, and, uh, and quite a lot of sort of politics happened there, and that's why we, we, we know about it. It's, it's particularly the 13th century sources uh, describing uh, 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 mostly sort of Icelanders uh, getting drunk, getting into trouble, uh, 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 having fights. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of talk about the actual trading, uh, uh, but it's clearly a place where people go and, uh, uh, and where people meet in a, in a rural society like this, you know, things are bound to happen. And, and, and that's why we, we know about it. And, and the annals of the 14th century, they talk quite a lot about so this ship came to Gausser and this, one, this famous person was on it. Uh, 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 and, but the traditional interpretation of this site is that it is a seasonal marketplace where Icelanders, local Icelanders met the, the Norwegian merchants and, and they, they exchanged their, their goods. Uh, what we found uh, uh, doesn't quite uh, support that uh, interpretation. We excavated some 10% of the, of the, of the area uh, and uh, they're mainly uh, 14th century levels, a little bit of the 13th century. Uh, clearly this was a seasonal place, it's, not a, uh, it, it's, it's really only operative maybe for a few weeks uh, over the summer, not even necessarily every year, uh, but probably most years. Uh, there is permanent plot division uh, and, and we can see that they maintained their, their plots uh, throughout the period we were, we were looking at, sort of from the mid-13th mid century to the end of the 14th. And, uh, uh, and you can see that you can make out there are clusters of these, these booths. They're really uh, sunken featured uh, buildings, uh, but it, it, it looks like sort of each merchant or each uh, 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 company uh, behind the ships had their own plot and uh, uh, which they then cleared and, and built on w when they were the there. Uh, there's a wooden church which has about three faces uh, from the middle of the 12th century to the middle of the, the 14th. The closest parallel to this the church are, are Norwegian churches. They are, they, they are, they are, it's, a, uh, it's interpreted as a merchant's church. It's the Norwegian merchants who, who operate this place and they've built themselves a, a church there. Uh, the artifact collection is, is very small. Uh, uh, but it is, uh, it's very unusual in the, in the Icelandic uh, context, it is, it is uh, dominated by, by imports. Uh, and there are things like, there's, there's a single walrus bone, uh, uh, two falcon bones, and uh, uh, quite a lot of sulfur. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, only one possible coin, which is uh, slightly embarrassing for a, for a trading site. Uh, and uh, only two weights, which is also embarrassing for a, for a trading site. In, in Bergen, which is the, the main trading town of Norway, which is contemporary to this, you have thousands of both coins and weights. 
And of course, you would expect that uh, on, on a place where, where uh, uh, retail was, was taking place. Uh, uh, so that, of course, you know, this fact, once we'd excavated uh, uh, this for, for, for several years, uh, sort of set us thinking about what the, what the nature of this place is. Uh, there is quite a lot, there's good evidence for elite consumption. Uh, uh, they have uh, 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 imported crockery and uh, but also expensive meat, the, the best joints of the of the of the cattle, uh, rare plants imported, uh, and uh, so so there are high status individual obviously individuals obviously on on this on this site, and the foreign signals are are quite quite strong compared to other other sites. Uh, and that's the church uh, in its three phases. And uh, uh, so our interpretation of this is that the, the material culture here is consistent with what you would expect from uh, ships' crews. Uh, and uh, it looks more like a sort of a, a, an arrival or departure lounge r rather than a, than a marketplace. Uh, you can see the, the, the merchants uh, are entertaining themselves and probably their guests. Uh, uh, high status Icelanders are, are residing there uh, as well, and it's probably them they are entertaining. Uh, and, 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 the, and when we read through the descriptions of what, what's taking place at, at Gauser, it is mainly that, that people are waiting. They go there to wait for the ship to take them to Norway. And, and, uh, and they often have to wait a long time for, for, for favorable wind, uh, even when the ship is already there, and they wait for, for the ships to, to, to be coming. So there's a lot of waiting, it's a waiting place. And, and uh, uh, some ship repairs are taking place there, not, not a lot though, and, and some processing, and packing, and loading, and unloading of, 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 of goods. But not retail, and no specialized crafts either, which you would also expect at a, at a, at a real trading place. Here's a little bit about the surfer processing. Uh, it's interesting, they, 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 they brought the unrefined sulfur to, to the site, they, they dug pits and they put the unrefined sulfur, sulfur in the pits and they fired it. And it's, it's, a, it's an enormously wasteful way of, of uh, uh, refining sulfur. You lose up to a half of the, of the, uh, of the volume of the, of the, the actual, uh, actual sulfur. And that certainly is, you know, tells us that the, 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 this is not being done in under market conditions. Uh, so uh, this was a port and a merchant's camp, uh, but, but not a market. It's more like a transport hub. An airport uh, uh, is, 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 a, is a better analogy rather than a, rather than a shopping mall. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, up there in the corner, we have the we have a representative of the the only link, material link between Iceland and the uh, Iberian Peninsula. <laughs> it's a it's a uh, we, have, we have four pieces of, of the same uh, Albarello uh, um, a jar, uh, uh, which our our pottery specialist thinks is Andalusian lusterware, and and. Uh, uh, but uh, mainly it's, it's, it's German and English pottery that, that uh, we, we find there. And this is one of the, the, the two weights uh, there in, in, in the background. Uh, so uh, uh, what we're looking at here is a system where the, the merchants, they, they come and until around 1400 they overwinter in Iceland. So they come with their ships, they, they, they put their ships ashore. These are small ships, they're not very big. And, and, uh, uh, and then they lodge with chieftains or officials or, or uh, uh, church institutions throughout the winter. And it's, it's during the winter that the actual trading takes place. And it's, it's more like sort of you go to a party and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and we have descriptions of, of you know, interesting things happening there. Uh, 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 the, the, uh, uh, but it is, it is the chieftains or the officials who, who are in charge of, of the goings on. So, so very often we hear that the, this, this and this chieftain uh, goes to meet the, the merchants and they, they say, well, I'll take over everything you have and, and uh, I'll pay you next year or the year after. And, and, uh, uh, and again, uh, th this is a system which, which is, is not conducive to, uh, you know, uh, and, and it's clearly not about uh, uh, profit in, profits in the capitalistic uh, sense. Uh, th it wouldn't make sense uh, uh, that way. Uh, uh, it's, it's clear that the native elite are in control of the distribution of the goods. It's they who decide who gets to buy and, and what they pay for it. There's, there's a, 
there's a, a, a great emphasis on the control over prices. And uh, uh, so there's no free market bargaining. Uh, and, and, the, and then you get a lot of polit politics involved in the honoring of the contracts. So you make a contract, the, the, the goods are exchanged, and then you have to pay up, usually a year after, or two years, or three years, and, and that's when the killings tend to start. And, and, uh, uh, and that, that's why, of course, we know about these, these things. Uh, it is arguable that, uh, uh, in fact, much of the trade actually took place in Norway. Uh, 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 so, so, so it's not only that the, the, much of the trade is taking place sort of off, uh, sort of outside Gausser in, in, in the chieftains' residences around Iceland, but in fact it's probably more likely that uh, when the chieftains or the officials go back to, to Norway, it's there that they, they put in the orders, and, and, uh, uh, and it's, it's there that the, the actual bargaining uh, takes, takes place. So the implications of, of this are uh, that the, 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 the actual trade of goods, uh, which we are used to think, to think about as the main thing in all this, is, is really just one element and not necessarily the, the most important one in these, these kinds of pre-capitalistic transport systems. Uh, so we have this very extensive transport system. Uh, it's, it's, it is pretty impressive in terms of its uh, infrastructure, uh, but, the, uh, but it, it's not built uh, to, to uh, channel goods primarily, and it's not built uh, uh, to produce uh, material profits. It's built for other things. It's built for social and political reasons. Uh, and uh, so the, the, the commerce part of it is, is, does not seem to be the driver of developments, and it's certainly not driven by market uh, dynamism. Uh, I think that's probably good enough. Uh, I, uh, well, there's, there's, a, there's an interesting text from the uh, late 13th century. It's called The King's Mirror. It's a, it's a Norwegian uh, uh, text, one of one of few uh, Nor Norwegian texts we have uh, from this, this uh, period. It's a, it's a manual for uh, a courtier of, of uh, how, to, how to behave. And it's a, it's a father and son discussion. And, uh, and there is one, one section deals with uh, sort of whether it's proper for an aristocrat to, to you know, engage in trade. And, and the father is saying, yes, you can, you, know, you can do that as long as you know, you're not uh, sort of in the role of frauds and foisterers uh, buying and selling falsely. So there is this idea that uh, you, know, the, the, uh, uh, you can have one type of trader which is, which is uh, uh, not honorable. And then if you're an aristocrat and, and you do it honorably, then it's, that's okay. Uh, uh, and, and you get this sense uh, quite a lot in, in, in the sagas. Uh, but then the, the main advice is that, yes, you should, you should go and, and, uh, and, and get, get to know other places. And, and in fact, most of the text is about that aspect. So, so uh, a young aristocrat needs to, to see the world. And uh, there's a long section about Greenland. And, uh, 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 what to expect there and, and about other countries and, and, uh, uh, and, and the, the, the trading of it so the, the, there's, there's no uh, the, there's very little uh, advice on, on, on how to make profits it's sort of it's, it's sort of a given that there will be profits and the advice of course is to invest in land not in not in further commercial uh, uh, endeavors and uh, uh, and 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 even even sort of when he says that sort of he advises them to, to the son to keep uh, 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 sort of he could keep at least one third in invested in trade discontinue your own journeys at sea or as a trader in foreign fields as soon as your mean have attained sufficient growth and you've studied foreign customs as much as you like and that I think is the it captures pretty much the the idea at least of the upper class for why you should be maintaining uh, and investing in in, in, the, in these these uh, uh, systems uh, it's it's the uh, it's almost like an education system in in, in a way and and uh, and then the kind of uh, 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 tourism uh, uh, and the profit part of it is is uh, incidental and it's mainly just to to uh, uh, make that uh, possible so I'll Leave you with that, and of course, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.